Are there any questions or comments from the audience? Yes, and do we have a microphone? Hello, thank you for a very interesting presentation. Um, uh, I just would like to ask you a question, a very simple one. Um, you uh, showed a picture of some activists in the start, and you, uh, start and you said that yeah, uh, you are not activists. Uh, why is this distinction important to you? Why, why do you say that you are not activists? Let's see. Do you hear me? Some, my ears are small. <laughs> you can have this back. Yeah. Is it working or? I don't know. Does it work? <laughs> it's like in my <laughs> eye. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah? Working on it. Some. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Genau. Can hold it for you. Right, I'm gonna hold it. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So, there is a distinction between activists and what we do, because we cannot call ourselves activism activists. Activists do actually take the street and demonstrate for their, um, for their demands. So they lead the, um, the actions, what's going on, from the population. And they rely on, on gathering many, many people to demand something which is actually normal of course everybody should should have this but we don't have it so let's go to the street and ask for it on the other hand what we do is we we take two levels of action we work with people we let them come we gather them and and let them move from here to there to demand something but on the other hand we we do demands to the to the government itself by doing um a practical action for example when you when you book a flight um, and demand the government to accept it, that's not something which which the activists who are on the street did, but it was another organizational level that was worked on. So I hope this distinction helps a little bit. I mean, it, there's nothing wrong, of course, of being activists. I, I don't know. Maybe it was like understood that it's a bad thing to be activists. No, of course not. We are all activists in a way, and each has their own um, their own way of of realizing what they want. Do you have another question? Uh, it uh, I never saw any kind of action in this level. It's uh, something as yeah, very astonishing. It, it seems also that is uh, money involved in that. How is the financial mm -hmm. relation for this group and how many are you? Yes. So let me talk a little bit about the center. It's actually a very small group of about 15 <coughs> people who come from different backgrounds and they all gather to create the action but also to, to name a core team which is specialized in this action. And for example, all the actions I described had to do in a way or another with Syria. So that's why I was in that team because my relationship to Syria will facilitate how are we going to understand the part of the refugees who actually are communicating, cooperating with us. This is number one. Number two, uh, behind the center there's um, Association, yeah. So there's a small association that allows the center to uh, take donations. And there are some regular donators who are anonymous and they just put money for the center to work in the regular basis. But each action that the center does is coupled with um, a crowdfunding action. For example, the last action, um, the, the finance part, was to gather 80,000 euros for the flight, <coughs> to be able to, to pay for the flight. And this number was gathered in 13 days, in which these tigers were playing outside, and the people are just watching and saying, okay, what should I do? Okay, we have 80,000 euros to gather. However, what's interesting is, um, the, f the flight didn't take place and we have 80,000 euros. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to hire lawyers. We already did 
And actually last week we started suing the German government in the name of the refugees who couldn't come. And it's going to go um, for the next six months, I think. And it's all going to be covered from this money. And at the end, we have some speculations that, yeah, it's going to work. We're going to win. And then the government should say, OK, we're sorry we did a mistake here. So let them travel. And this will change, hopefully, the way refugees come to Germany. So thank you, Yasser. Um, I actually have a question for you. Yeah, please. Uh, I, w <laughs> no, I, I think I'll just try to speak <laughs> up. Um, <laughs> So I think um, I find some, I really see the sense of political beauty in your projects. And uh, I'm quite intrigued about the way you actually put people in power. Uh, you sort of expose uh, the responsibility they actually have, but also all the citizens in the society. And uh, um, I think that um, your projects are kind of, uh, you're doing the unthinkable. Uh, at the same time, uh, in the moment your projects are put out to play or articulated, I think um, they're so simple. They're like unthinkable and simple in the same moment. So maybe you could say something about how you work to develop new projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, <coughs> from the name, the political beauty, which two things that usually don't come in, in one sentence, we are trying to do what the government is actually not allowed to do. So the government is not allowed to bring refugees without papers, so we try to do it. And let the decision, of course not through us, we just demand something and put the, the government in the position where they say yes or no, and then leave them to confront the whole population. So we need a statement from the government, which we had actually in the last um, in the last action. The parliament voted on the decision that this flight should not take place. It means the German parliament said no to refugees. And now they are facing the whole population who were, um, who was actually very happy about the welcoming uh, culture that, that was launched by Merkel, which has vanished now. And they try to say, okay, but you said Refugees are welcome, and then you stop doing everything, and now you say no, so what's happening? The, the society is changing, and the politics is also changing. So what's, what's going to come next is going to be the answer to how these, uh, how these projects take impact. Do we have time for one more? I hope so. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I was wondering uh, how, I mean, the fact that, that the government is actually taking you very seriously, that they, that they make a vote in the parliament. Are you a very famous group in Germany? Ha do, uh, does the public, uh, or do the public have a, are you common in, in the public uh, arena? Well, statistically, <laughs> seen we uh, we are only famous in berlin and a little bit in germany <laughs> <laughs> but in the last two years since the kindertransporthilfe uh, there was some um, impact in the media that was done by the group and that's why everybody o have almost has almost heard about it and uh, it was like actually raising each year because each action is bigger than the one before and then the impact and people would be like waiting, okay, what are they going to do this year? So they wait and they spread the word, the word, and almost everybody in Berlin have heard from us. So to the governmental side, uh, there is this second level of organization uh, where we, at the same time that the Tigers were playing outside, we were having something, well, I didn't mention this because of the time, there was something called the beauty salon and uh, we we had guests from the parties politicians and <laughs> poets and and philosophers to discuss the same matter which we are fighting for and every day for one and a half hour we would sit 
and just talk about it and it would be like streamed online and people would see ah this guy talked about it so it must be important and then it also exploded the the whole impact and the attention of the media Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you very much. I, <laughs> I would like us to uh, continue this discussion, but I think mm. that uh, um, your presentation gave us a lot to think about. <laughs> so I want to suggest that we take like five to ten minutes break for people to maybe get something to drink or have a cigarette and whatever. And uh, I also see that uh, we have uh, uh, participation now through Skype with uh, Mike Bonanno. Say hello, Hi everyone. Mike. Hello, Mike. Welcome. <laughs> We're very looking forward for your presentation in uh, about 30 minutes. Uh, but we will continue the discussion with Yasser uh, after a short break okay. first. So uh, please you. prepare harder questions. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone. And welcome back from uh, the first break. And we still have some time to continue the discussion with uh, Yasser. And I hope you all did some brainstorming now, and we're ready for the next question. Yes, Sandra? Hi, yes, sir. <laughs> so I have two comments, one question and one comment. I was wondering, is the, can you say that the strategy of your um, Zentrum für politische Schönheit could be that you're actually observe the system within. Is that your, like your, the plan that you observe how the government, the German government, works and how it functions, and then you kind of beat it with their own instruments. instruments. Yeah. That's one question that I would like to address, and mm -hmm. maybe you can talk a little bit more about it, and then. I have a comment that I wonder a little bit if you could also open up your ideas more to a European question rather than just keeping it to a German one, which mm -hmm. I think is very necessary. Okay, thank you. So of course using the current system is a very essential part of our work uh, because we don't, well, not in, in the principle, we don't want the whole system, but um, we want actually to use the system to okay we want to use the ex existing structure to achieve what we uh, what we think is good for the society at the moment so what's happening is when we plan for a new action uh, we start observing what's happening so just like the the last action i'm going to come up with an example uh, the pope visited the the island the kid started to ask, like, why don't they, why don't they fly? And then uh, there was a lesson from the history about the emperor. So we put all these together and start linking them and look. Okay, now why do why can't the refugees fly? Yeah, of course, because you have to look into the the constitution and see you have a paragraph that says they're not allowed to come. Uh, why are we going to bring them in the first place? Well, because it happened, the Pope took some people without any papers. So it is possible. If it happens once, then it is possible. And then it means we can repeat it. And the third thing is uh, about the Tigers, because it's also very uh, related to the history of Europe. It's something that every European knows and relates to as, as their history that the arena is there and the emperor or the kaiser is sitting there and they are just judging if people are going to live or die which is translated in the in the current government's um, policy almost in the same way they always have the last say so should these people live or not should these people take help or not should we take refugees or not and the question is um, are they the ones who are uh, alleged to uh, to decide, or is it us, the people, who, who can actually decide and move against it? Uh, to your comment, if, if we are only in Germany or planning to go around, 
Yes, I'm in Norway. So <laughs> uh, I would love to spread the, the, this spirit of changing into a political beauty where, where people can do what the government cannot do and mix these, um, these borders between art and politics to achieve a better society. This is the main goal, and if it can go to every European country and every country in the world, that would be something good. I'm going to work on that, or actually I'm working on it. Thank you. Do you have another question? Any other questions? Comments? Uh, actually, I have three questions. So okay. Probably the Should I take a paper? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, two are more organizational level. So one is, can you say a few words about upcoming projects, if possible? Mm -hmm. And the other one, it seems that the projects you do takes uh, an awful lot of work. You do a lot of work. Uh, there is a lot of administrative work. So how far do you plan into the future? So, mm -hmm. so to, to know that how, how long so let's say we're going to do this. And also, the third Can question. The mic, yeah. Maybe. Okay, mm -hmm. that's better. Yeah. So, and then the third question is: uh, Can you give a few examples of uh, the work of the Center for for Political Beauty on other issues that you are not involved in? So, not only mm -hmm. the refugees, but uh, other things. Yeah. Okay. Um, I should say I forgot the first question. So the first question was <laughs> uh, a bit of uh, so if, if you can uh, or, uh, two organizational questions. One is uh, okay, what's, let's what's go in one the future. For one. Stay. So plans for the future. Okay. The plans for the future is, uh, as I told you before, we finished this action in uh, the end of June, and we gathered the money, and then we were uh, deciding what to do with it. So the action is not over yet. And as I said before, one week ago, we started this uh, to sue the government. And it's actually a very complex matter, because we're suing the government, we're suing Air Berlin, and we're trying to change a guideline in the European Union. So it's on three uh, fronts, and one of them should work. If you put three balls, then one should go into. <laughs> yeah. The second one is the second one uh, is the, uh, the amount of time taken to to prepare an action. Well, this is a very dynamic thing. Uh, you cannot say that we, or I cannot say that we start the action from the beginning as is, and then it ends. Usually it takes, well this is what you might want to hear, it takes about three <coughs> to four months of preparation before the action. Uh, but before that, of course, there's like uh, side work which is done by collecting uh, news and looking what are the dynamics in the world, what's changing and what's happening, just like the Pope's visit, for example, that was a key thing for the last action. And honestly, it wasn't all about uh, tigers, it wasn't about a flight. The original action was about to kidnap uh, the famous artist Ai Weiwei. <laughs> <laughs> because he recently moved to Berlin, and then we were saying, yeah, he's, he's a great name, so maybe he would like to co cooperate with us. And we said, okay, we're going to convince him to go to Greece, and then from Greece with the boat to Turkey, and then we're going to smuggle him back, but we're going to announce that he was kidnapped in Turkey. So we went to him, to his studio, he's like a big studio in, in Berlin now. Went there, we had an appointment with him and, hello Mr. Ai Weiwei, we would like to kidnap you. And then he said, no, bye. That was it. So we had to change everything. <laughs> so no matter how, how long and how much you think, some things are external and you cannot decide. So th they change. And I don't understand why, he, why did he refuse? Yeah, the yeah third and thing. the third one was just a few examples of other things you do uh, yeah. apart from refugee question. So uh, the first action that began in the Center for Political Beauty, it was in 2009, and it had to do with the war in Bosnia and the refugees uh, at the time. So there was this theme about the war that you had a lot of photos with shoes. And we decided to launch um, a call to the whole world that please send us your shoes and we're going to build a statue that says UN and we're going to fill it with shoes. So people started uh, posting their shoes. Um, priests, uh, doctors, um, 
people from everywhere in the globe just put a pair of shoes and send them to Germany. And then we gathered them, well, again, the thing changed. We, we couldn't like convince the, the German government that we want to make this statue and put it in front of Brandenburger Tor. They didn't accept, I don't know why, and fill it with shoes. So we actually just brought the shoes and put them like in front of Brandenburger Tor. <laughs> This was the, the first action. Uh, there's also another famous action uh, last year, as well after uh, the Toten Kommen, after we brought the bodies to, to be buried in Berlin. Uh, well, I didn't participate completely in this action because it didn't have uh, something directly to do with Syria. Uh, what they did is, in, in Berlin, there's this monument in front of the councillor's office for the uh, people who died crossing the Berlin Wall. And there are crosses with names on them. And we thought the, the wall was gone for 25 years now already. So uh, let's look, how many walls do we have today? And then we discovered that the Europe actually has a great wall. It's even longer than the, the wall of China. And it's all um, guarded and you have Frontex and you have military from every country in the world which is uh, looking um, into these borders and making sure that nobody comes to the other side. So um, we let some people dress up as workers so with these uh, phosphor uh, jackets and then they went there and just like took them out during the day as if they were working they took them with them and then we organized the bus that will take um, volunteers who want to go with us to the European borders down in the, in the south and we put them there and then we made photos with with these volunteers putting the crosses there and saying here's a wall as well if you think that the wall is gone 25 years ago no it's still here and still splitting people and it's a very ugly wall it's very high with with like uh, metal what is called wire. yeah and it's very long and many many few people know about it in Europe and this is like b because we live in a in a very relaxed situation somehow that yeah it's happening far away so we're not feeling it so the message of the of the center is like we're gonna bring everything what's ugly in this world here so we can feel it and then react to it and change something aggressive humanism Something like this. Yes. Yeah. So we still have time for two questions uh, or comments. Um, sorry, I have another question. <laughs> yes, I, please. I, I was curious as to what kind of uh, media strategy you have because it seems that you reach so many people and you, all your actions seem to be quite um, efficient. And um, I mean, obviously, they capture a lot of people, but. Are the people in your in 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 your um, organization? Are they do they have a media background or what is your approach here? Um, well, throughout the time from two thousand nine until today, uh, this accumulation of actions made the journalists, especially, uh, friends with us, and uh, they were always curious. So usually, the center has two to three actions per year and they have specific dates so it's usually around June or July and in November and also in the beginning like February or something um, the journalists would always like call us and ask what are you doing what are you planning to do of course this is all secret and um, usually 24 hours before the action we just call all the media agencies and say hello the Center for Political Beauty is doing this and this if you like to say something about it. So on the next day, you have many, many media uh, agencies who just publish something about it, and then everybody's going to read it. Of course, Facebook and Twitter are like basic elements because they have the most um, basis of, of um, followers and outreach as well. So it's, it's a little bit uh, of a media strategy, and it's working well. Thank you. Um, just a quick question about organization as well. You mentioned you were about 15 people in the core group. 
Uh, so I'm just wondering how, whether you're able to support uh, all those 15 people to work full time with the centre, or whether it's something people do on the side of their jobs, and how the kind of dynamics between those two and the volunteers that you get on the actions, etc. Well, it's different from member to member, and uh, actually this core team has more to do with the uh, uh, specialty and, and education of the person and experience rather than with the position and if they work full-time or part-time. So, for example, I don't work full-time nor part-time. I um, have regular meetings. I'm actually not uh, an employee there. I just go there because I love it. And it, it makes me feel happy when something happens, so I just do it because I have my own work. And most of the people in, in the team are like this. They have their own uh, work, where they get their living from, and when they come to the center, they just work um, like this. <laughs> it's, it's really uh, a work of passion and um, creativity, and it's very beautiful to be there. So I, I'm not going to ask about money. I'm that's personally. Um, however, these donations that come would allow the center to, of course, contribute a little bit financially to its members. But most of the time it's going to the uh, office where we are now and uh, all the calls and all the connections that, that are going on. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Yasser. Please. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> you great. <laughs>